ahead and get into talking about lattices, primitive unit cells, basic vector or basis vectors, and not basic vectors, basis vectors and lattice constants. Um, so last time we kind of outlined the kind of basically the fundamental the, this kind of idea of structure, which is short range order, long range order, long range translational order, long range orientational order, and a lattice is this kind of um, uh, and we kind of start off with the basics. Before we get too uh, in depth, we're going to be studying crystalline materials first. We are going to be starting uh, first in 2D, and then we're going to build up into 3D. So when you're trying to describe some type of periodic or long-range order, um, one of the first things that you want to do is first, like well, let's let's start in 2D, uh, let's start in 2D first, just to get an idea. We want to be able to define a lattice. So a lattice is just some type of periodic array of points or atoms in one, two, or three D. And we're going to kind of build up and kind of describe this lattice. So this lattice will have uh, in a crystalline material, it will have short range order and long range order, and specifically long range translational order when we're thinking in 2D first. So um, it could be in 1, 2, or 3D, but again, we're going to start uh, one of the simplest cases, or not the simplest case, but one of the easiest ways to kind of get started is with this 2D case. So uh, there are points on this uh, 2D lattice, and what we're going to do is we're going to be able to describe an entire 2D lattice, and you'll see a couple of examples, by just three things. We're going to describe that. We're going to be able to create, we will create an entire 2D lattice, an infinite number of uh, atoms or points. It will, and we could, uh, we could create that by uh, defining three things. Two lattice constants, A and B, uh, and, or A1, basically, you can, uh, or A1 magnitude, A2 magnitude, or vectors as well. Uh, two basis vectors that have a magnitude and a direction and an interaxial angle. Between them. Once we have that, we could figure out and uh, define any point in that 2D lattice. Uh, and we could describe that as our origin, and we could describe any of the previous points by doing some mathematical operations just with this, these vectors, our lattice constants, our basis vectors, and this interaxial angle. That's it. We just need that and gamma, the magnitude, the direction, and we're ready to go. This is the inherent beauty uh, and, you know, really unbelievable, you know, not unbelievable, but this is the kind of the cool part about crystallography. So, the key thing. Uh, in describing a lattice, if you want to kind of describe it accurately, is when we pick our basis vectors, or um, specifically uh, what we're going to describe in a second, primitive uh, basis vectors, we need to pick the shortest distance, uh, the shortest lattice translation is A1 uh, uh, to A2. Uh, and it's just going to be defined again, A and B, or A1, B1. Again, we kind of discussed that in a second. It's, it's a vector. Interaxial angle is then defined as well. And what we want to do is we want to pick these, again, we want to pick our basis vectors here such that we define or create a primitive cell. A cell. And a primitive cell, primitive cell, a primitive cell is defined as a cell that will only have one lattice point or atom. Again, you could describe these as points uh, or atom. So when we draw that cell, it was only going to contain one atom. So let's do a couple of examples uh, below, and let's kind of get an idea of this. So let's say that I choose this is my basis vector. So again, this is my this is the magnitude, and that's going to be the magnitude of a one, for example, in that direction. So here's my a one. It's going in this direction. I'm choosing that as my basis vector one. B is going to be equal to the magnitude of a two in that direction, and then I have my interaxial angle gamma right there. So, this is beautiful. Let's see, let's test to make sure, you know, this is my choice of my primitive vectors. So let's see if I actually meet this. Am I, am I creating a, do I have a primitive basis set? So, do I have a primitive basis set for this cell? Well, let's go ahead and let's take a look. So let's go here, here, here. Because again, this would be like the square that I would create, right? So if I create a cell, a 2D cell, based on these vectors, this would be kind of the direction, right? So you can see if I can continue that. A cell here, I'm going to create 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 a cell here, you get the picture. So let's look at this primitive cell. Uh, if I were to count the contributions of atoms, I have an atom right here, right? But you can see it's shared between one, two, three, four cells. So four cells are sharing that one point. So this, this here is contributes fourth of a lattice point. What about here? One, two, three, four. Fourth again. 
What about here? One, two, three, four, a fourth again. What about here? One, two, three, four, a fourth again. So what's four times one fourth? One. That's my primitive flat. I, I have chosen a primitive basis set. Why? Because when I draw my primitive unit cell, I only have one atom. That's it. And you can kind of do a little thought experiment. Like if we were to shift, if we were to shift this just a little bit, like a tiny, tiny bit, like up or down, like these cells, for example, if you were to shift the basis up just a tiny bit, you would kind of only have one atom in there. But anyways, that's a little bit harder to see. Let's look at the consequences of this. Let's do kind of the same operation here. So again, I've got A2, A1, A and B, etc., etc. Uh, I've got my primitive lattice set. So let's go ahead and draw that picture right here. So again, here, 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 here. So let's see again. I have atoms here, here, and here for my unit cell. One, two, three, four, shared. 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 So again, this is a primitive set because I have one atom. Let's say we drew it. Let's say my basis set was this. And this was my basis set. Let's say I chose that my B was this long. Well, let's go ahead and count up the atoms. So I have one here, I have one here, I have one here. Oops, let me draw that here, draw that here, draw that here, draw my big guy here, draw my big guy here, and draw my big guy here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six atoms in my, you know, if I chose this as my primitive basis set. So let's go look at the contributions. So for this atom, one, two, three, four. What about this atom? One, two, three, four. What about this atom? One, two, three, four. What about this atom? One, two, three, four. Same thing, right? But I've got four corners again. So four times the fourth contribution. So for the corner atoms, I'm going to draw these in blue. Actually, I'm going to keep those in red. But what about these atoms right here, these blue guys? How many are they shared between? One and two unit cells. What about this guy? One, two unit cells. So I have this plus two times a half. So I do not have a primitive lattice set because we know that that's equal to two. So this is not a primitive lattice basis set. So uh, this is kind of the foundation of crystallography. And we'll get into kind of, and actually, you'll, you, if you take a crystallography course, you'll go through kind of some, you know, amazing kind of symmetries again you have to kind of have this like kind of artistic uh nature to your thought process but um you could kind of think about we, we've just gone over actually translational symmetry right we could describe any you know i could describe any point in that lattice by some sum of you know 2a1 plus 3a2 i could describe any atom by kind of this a combination of these vectors uh, but you could also have mirror symmetry or glide symmetry or rotational symmetry um, there's tons of different uh, kind of crystallographic uh, orientations and directions that you can kind of get into. And actually, you'll have um, some of the crystallographic moves that you uh, discussed. There's 230 space groups. There's 32 crystallographic point groups. There's 14 Bravis lattice. We'll discuss these. Six crystal systems. We'll discuss those as well. But again, it gets very, very in-depth very, very quickly. So that's the 2D case. Um, but we are actually going to quickly move into the 3D case now. Uh, and in this class, we're going to focus on six... Uh, crystal systems, triclinic, monoclinic, orthorhombic, uh, tetragonal, hexagonal, but cubic is going to be the one that we describe the most. So we're going to study BCC, simple cubic, FCC, and uh, HCP a little bit. So that goes over here, hexagonal close path. Uh, but cubic systems are the ones that you're going to be kind of uh, talked or you're going to be asked to kind of study most extensively. So these will be your focus in this class. Know these as well, and you can kind of see the symmetry decreases, right? Cubic has the highest degree of symmetry, um, but the other uh, crystal systems uh, have basically less symmetry. And you can kind of see that on this next page where you can see for simple cubic or for you know, cubic materials, our A, B, our three lattice parameters now. And so instead of just in 2D, we had A and B. And in 3D, we have A, B, and C. And where we had our just our inner, inner single interaction angle here, now we have alpha, beta, and gamma as well. And we have A1, A2, A3, you know, for your vectors. So there's angles that uh, correspond to kind of each of those uh, angles between your internet, between your basis set. So that's what we're going to be. And you can see here, here we have the highest degree of symmetry, but now orthorhombic, look at 
no longer these uh, lattice parameters are at the same magnitude. Triclinic, we don't have even, you know, here the angles are all the same. Triclinic's the lowest symmetry. We don't have any magnitudes the same. We don't have any angles the same. But we're going to be so focusing on uh, simple cubic in this class. Now, uh, next time, the next video, we are going to get into, uh, you know, before we get into kind of describing these crystal systems, it's going to be important to kind of remind yourself, hopefully, about some crystallographic directions and vectors. So I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.